it is now my privilege to introduce to you the speaker of the day that's going to give us our message of what Memorial Day means to the people that are remaining. Reverend Grimm and his wife Joan have lived in the town of Rush for 20 years. He is presently the chaplain of the Rush Fire Department and serves on the Board of Visitors at the Industry School. Reverend Grimm retired in 1999 as a chaplain at Industry School, where he lived on the grounds with his family of four sons, who attended the Rush Henrietta and schools and the Rush Church. They were also involved in Rush community sports programs. The family was active in the Cub Scout Pack 134, Boy Scout Troop 134, and the YMCA Indian Guides. All their sons are Eagle Scouts from Troop 134. Reverend Grimm and his wife Joan now live in the town of Scottsville, New York. I want to welcome to our ceremony this morning, Reverend Charles Grimm. Thank you, Bill. It's an honor to be here with you. We gather here this morning to recognize and honor the men and women who have given and continue to give their lives to defend us and our way of life. They have made the ultimate sacrifice of giving up their lives to enable us to continue to live here in freedom, a freedom that we must admit we often take for granted. It is moments like this gathering that we need to think together about the legacy of the freedom and our own responsibility for it. We stand here as members of the Rush community, families and neighbors to remember and honor these men and women and their families. They stepped out of the town of Rush and other towns in our nations to join the armed services and to defend our way of life. They gave up their opportunity to raise a family, to pursue their future and work and dreams, to live a life of love and happiness, provide their families with the blessings of their presence, all to defend each and every one of us. How humbling that makes us feel this moment. We cannot, we must not take it for granted. Our nation was founded on basic principles that our forefathers declared in the Declaration of Independence, that we have the right to life, to liberty, and to the pursuit of happiness. And those we honor today took that seriously. They put themselves in harm's way to defend those very principles. The first principle, life, is basic because it is considered sacred, a gift given to us by our Creator. It makes each of us a member of the human race and the human family. It is a gift that we honor and protect as a community and as a nation. It is played out every day in our life here in Rush community as we help our neighbors and as our volunteer firemen, firefighters, EMTs, our police respond to help each and every one of us. We come to the aid of each other because life is sacred, and we are our brothers and our sisters keeper. Those we honor today made the ultimate sacrifice in helping their neighbor and in defending life. The second principle of liberty is basic to our democracy, a nation that governs of and by and for the people. And I'm not talking about a liberty where some people go out and do anything they please, wherever they please, and whenever they please. I'm not talking about that liberty, but a liberty and a freedom that based on taking responsibility to walk a life of personal integrity, respect for the law, and concern for our, your neighbor. This is how we live in Rush. This is how we want our children to live. And this is how the nation lives. And this is what those we honor today defended. In talking about liberty of freedom, General Dwight Eisenhower said during World War II, quote, the winning of freedom is not to be compared to the winning of a game with a victory recorded forever in history. Freedom 
has its life in hearts, the actions and the spirits of men and women. And so it must be daily earned and refreshed, else like a flower cut from its giving life, giving life, from the roots, it will wither and die. And didn't we all experience that as we experienced 9-11? Each generation is responsible for protecting its freedoms. This truth has been brought home to us. We cannot take our freedom and liberties for granted. We know there are those in the world ready and willing to take it from us, ready and willing to do us harm and to destroy our very way of life. So liberty is coupled with responsibility. And those we honor today met the call of their nation to defend life and to defend liberty and our right to pursue our own happiness. Finally, the principle of freedom that we have the right to pursue happiness of our own. We all work hard in this community and we want the best for our families. But as we live, as we are in the cemetery and, and before and as we leave this cemetery, I ask you to think about continuing to honor those who have died by doing something for the happiness of their families, of those who have given their all, their very lives for freedom's sake. I'm talking more specifically about those who have served and died in Iraq and Afghanistan wars and the families that they leave behind. We cannot, and we must not forget them. Those who are physically injured, mentally injured, we must think of them, their families, and help them pursue, pursue this happiness that we believe in as a principle. I challenge everyone here in this cemetery this morning, every person here standing, to take personal action and responsibility to help members of these families. We know for the fact that these families are not without emotional scars. They need emotional support and spiritual and financial support. We need to seek these families out. We need to make ourselves known to them. We need to take the responsibility of showing our appreciation for their loved ones' sacrifices and that of their families. We need to be there for them. I think the contemporary poet Annette Wynne sums it up this morning in this poem called Memorial Day. Is it enough to think today of all our brave and then put away the thought until a year has spent? Is this full honor for our dead? Is it enough to sing a song and deck a grave and all year long forget the brave who died that we might keep our heart land proud and free? Full service needs a greater toll that we who live give heart and soul to keep the land they died to save and be ourselves in turn the brave. Amen. Aim. Fire. Ready? Aim. Fire. Eternal God, Lord of life, on this day of remembrance, we gather to give you thanks for the lives of people whose passing reveals to us the value of this life you have granted us. As we recall their lives, teach us so to number our days that we may use wisely the treasure of time given to us. Grant us grace to entrust our loved ones to your undying love until that day when all hearts are mended all families united, all lives restored. In the name of Christ Jesus, our Lord, we pray. Amen. <laughs>